My name's Marsha McAdam and I have a diagnosis of borderline personality disorder. Um, and while I've received life change in therapy at the minute, um, I feel like I'm recovering, um, especially around this really uncertain time at the minute. Um, so yeah, I'm so glad that we're able to do this clip. We've been, it's tried to say that we've been living in unprecedented time, but uh, how has all this kerfuffle, the lockdown and everything, how has it affected you as you are trying to come out of something that has been such a painful and distressing and, and lengthy period of your life? I used to be a bit of a recluse. Um, and then the last few years I ended up starting going out and I had a routine. I had, um, I had, I'd built up relationships. And um, so to actually now be locked in my house, it's, it's lonelier than ever. And it sort of feel like I've gone a step backwards. Um, and it's so, so lonely. Listen, uh, that is crystal clear to me that, uh, uh, it feels like uh, you having gone back. Uh, but to me, the way I'm looking at it, uh, it's exactly the opposite. You know, the, the, the fact that you have been able to survive uh, without the network of support around you that you had so painstakingly built up is uh, an enormous credit to you as a person and, and to the strength that you've really been able to gather in the period, you know, during your, your recovery. Um, well, I think um, mentalization actually gave me the tools to actually calm myself and actually be able to understand why I'm feeling so distressed at the minute. And um, it allows me to validate that it's okay to feel that way. I mean, that's a critical, that's a critical thing. You know, um, if I said to you that in the past two months, I didn't have any crazy thoughts going through my head about what was going on, I'd be lying. Uh, it's really just the number of crazy thoughts that you have that maybe differentiates one person from another. Uh, but, you know, it's been a crazy time that gives people the opportunity to have crazy thoughts that wouldn't happen that if one's friends were around and really helped to normalize it in a sense, but it's okay, you know, these are just thoughts and these are just crazy but you don't have to listen to them. Uh, you don't have to follow them. Um, uh, just to say uh, that it's wonderful that you've come through this uh, and, and you're doing as well as you can and we're kind of coming out of this somewhat, but that everyone that I know with the diagnosis that you uh, have actually struggled at this time. Now, you're not the only ones who have struggled because a great number of us have struggled. But that this is not a good time with someone, for someone who has a persistent distressing problem. You are skating on very thin ice and that it doesn't take a lot to crack, to put a crack in that ice. And then and, of course it feels really scary. And I guess some people that have been buffered for years with their work and that routine, um, so I did not suddenly that be stripped um, away. Um, those, those are the people that don't usually acknowledge that. So that we need to make sure that it's, the people know that it's okay to feel the way that they do and that ask for help because you deserve it now more than ever.
Um, so yeah, that's how I sort of think. So um, we need to really validate the persistent distress that people are feeling. Absolutely. Um, and make people who have a particular problem in regulating their feelings. Like some people with the diagnosis that you had mentioned, which I'm not going to repeat on air because I don't believe in it. But, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, with the diagnosis that you mentioned, they have difficulty in regulating their feelings sometimes. That this is the worst possible time for them. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you know, uh, be on Thursday evening at eight o'clock, I go out and I uh, clap the uh, frontline workers uh, who put their lives at risk. But to me, Marsha, you're as much a frontline worker as any of them because you have to have courage. You, you are facing a danger like they do. Uh, the danger is internal, but you're facing up to it and you're living through it uh, with courage and with determination the same way that they do. And, you know, I, I want to be there for you to clap uh, and, and say, you know, well done. Uh, you know, it's a distressing time. But my God, do I admire the effort that you're able to make. And thank you. Um, I guess the, the fact that you validate all these real fears and we also the stigma that goes with it, um, that, that with that label um, of the thing that we're not going to mention. <laughs> but um, to to actually acknowledge and validate um, instead of being attention seeking or controlling, manipulative or that. Um, so th thank you for um, doing that. Listen, uh, thank you for now and at other times sharing your experience, which is also an anxiety provoking thing to do also a courageous thing to do. It's also a frontline thing to do. And whilst you're willing to go to the frontline, I will be there next to you, Marsha. Thank you. Thank you.